Have you ever wondered how bleach is made? Bleach, an unassuming household staple, yet a potent concoction of chemistry, serves as a silent guardian against germs and stains. It's a substance we frequently use, yet seldom appreciate its complexity. Its power to banish grime, disinfect surfaces, and even purify water is something we almost take for granted. But have you ever paused to think about what goes into its creation? The process is more intriguing than one might imagine, involving careful combinations of specific components and meticulous chemical reactions. Bleach is more than just a cleaning agent. It's a testament to our scientific progress, a tool that has evolved with us over the centuries, and a crucial ally in maintaining cleanliness and hygiene. So the next time you reach for that bottle of bleach, remember the fascinating science behind it. Now, strap in and prepare for a journey into the world of bleach manufacturing. Bleach begins with salt and water. Yes, you heard it right. The two main ingredients in the production of bleach are as common as they come, sodium chloride, which you may know as table salt, and water. It's quite astonishing to think that these everyday items form the basis for such a powerful cleaning agent. Let's delve a little deeper into these core ingredients. Sodium chloride or table salt is a compound made up of two elements, sodium and chlorine. Sodium is a soft, silvery white, highly reactive metal, while chlorine is a yellow-green gas at room temperature. Together, these two elements form the white crystalline substance that we sprinkle on our fries. Now, water might seem like the simplest of substances, but it's actually quite complex. Water is a molecule composed of two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom. It's a unique compound with some very special properties. For instance, it's a great solvent meaning it can dissolve many different substances. That's why water is often referred to as the universal solvent. But how do salt and water come together to form bleach? Well, the process begins with something called electrolysis. This is a method that uses an electric current to drive a non-spontaneous chemical reaction. In the case of bleach production, electrolysis of a salt solution results in the production of chlorine and caustic soda. Chlorine is a potent disinfectant, capable of killing bacteria and viruses, while caustic soda, or sodium hydroxide, is a strong base that can neutralize acids. When chlorine and caustic soda are combined with water, they form a solution known as sodium hypochlorite, the active ingredient in most household bleaches. So you see, these humble ingredients of salt and water through a series of chemical reactions transform into a potent cleaning and disinfecting agent. It's a remarkable example of how chemistry can transform simple everyday materials into something quite extraordinary. So salt and water are the unsuspecting heroes in our bleach story. The magic happens during a process called electrolysis. Now, this isn't a mystical Harry Potter style transformation, but it's a scientific one that's just as remarkable. Electrolysis at its core involves the use of an electric current to induce a chemical change. This process takes place in an electrolytic cell, which is essentially a controlled environment for the magic to happen. Let's dive into the specifics. In the case of bleach production, our electrolytic cell contains a salty solution, which is a mix of ordinary table salt, sodium chloride, and water. When electric current is passed through this solution, it triggers a series of reactions. On one end of the cell, the negatively charged electrode, or cathode, attracts the positively charged sodium ions. Here they react with water molecules, producing a compound called sodium hydroxide and releasing hydrogen gas. On the other end, the positively charged electrode or anode draws in the negatively charged chloride ions. They too undergo a transformation, releasing chlorine gas. So to recap, we started with a simple solution of table salt and water. By applying an electric current, We've ended up with chlorine gas, sodium hydroxide, and a bit of hydrogen gas as a byproduct. But how does this relate to bleach? Well, the chlorine and sodium hydroxide are the two primary components of bleach. The chlorine gives bleach its disinfecting properties, while the sodium hydroxide enhances the solution's overall stability and effectiveness. And there you have it. From a humble saltwater solution to a powerful cleaning agent, all thanks to the marvel of electrolysis. This process is not only key to the production of bleach, but it's also used in a host of other industries, from metal plating to the production of batteries. 
So next time you're tackling a tough stain or disinfecting a surface, remember the fascinating journey that your humble bottle of bleach has been on. It's a testament to the wonder of science and the power of transformation. Electrolysis, a simple process with extraordinary results. Well, we've got our chlorine and sodium hydroxide, now what? Well, it's time to bring these two key players together to create the star of the show. Sodium hypochlorite, the active ingredient in bleach. Imagine a dance floor where our two components, chlorine and sodium hydroxide, meet. They sway and interact, moving in a, a choreographed dance of chemistry. The chlorine, a strong and reactive element, finds a partner in the sodium hydroxide, a compound known for its ability to break down substances. Together, they perform a dance of transformation. The reaction between these two is known as a displacement reaction. As they dance together, they exchange partners. In this case, chlorine gives up an electron to the sodium in the sodium hydroxide, displacing the hydroxide ion. This forms sodium chloride, or table salt, and water. But the dance isn't over yet. This reaction also produces chlorine gas, which is highly reactive. The chlorine gas then reacts with the remaining sodium hydroxide, forming sodium hypochlorite and water. This process is exothermic, meaning it releases heat. The reaction not only creates our star sodium hypochlorite, but also gives off energy as a byproduct. It's like a performance that ends with a grand finale of fireworks. Sodium hypochlorite is a strong oxidizing agent. It's this oxidizing ability that makes bleach such a powerful disinfectant. It can break down the cell walls of bacteria and other microorganisms, effectively killing them. So, in essence, the bleach we use in our homes is born from a dance of chemistry, a dance of transformation and energy. But let's not forget about the other products of this reaction. The sodium chloride and water that are also formed play their own roles. Sodium chloride helps to stabilize the bleach while the water acts as a diluent, ensuring the bleach isn't too strong, and voila, we have bleach. The result of a chemical ballet where elements and compounds meet, dance, and transform, a process that's as fascinating as it is useful. And that, my friends, is the birth of bleach. Bleach is not a one-trick pony, it comes in different types and uses. Diving into the world of bleach, we find that it mainly falls into two categories chlorine bleach and oxygen bleach. Chlorine bleach, also known as sodium hypochlorite, is the heavy-duty character in our story. It's a potent disinfectant and a stain remover extraordinaire. This is the bleach you reach for when you've got stubborn stains on your white laundry or when you need to sanitize surfaces. On the other hand, we have oxygen bleach. This is the kinder, gentler version of bleach. It's color safe, making it a great choice for your colored clothing items. Oxygen bleach, also known as sodium percarbonate, is a compound of natural soda crystals and hydrogen peroxide. When mixed with water, it releases oxygen and provides a deep clean that's less harsh than its chlorine counterpart. But bleach isn't all about laundry. It's a versatile player with a wide range of uses. For example, chlorine bleach is a popular choice for disinfecting surfaces, especially in healthcare settings. It can kill a broad spectrum of germs and viruses, including the flu virus and E. coli. In the home, bleach can be used to clean and disinfect a variety of surfaces, from kitchen counters to bathroom tiles. It can also be used to sanitize drinking water in emergency situations, making it a valuable item in disaster preparedness kits. Don't forget the gardening applications, too. A diluted bleach solution can help control the growth of mold and mildew on your plants. It can also sanitize garden tools to prevent the spread of plant diseases. Meanwhile, oxygen bleach has its own set of uses. It's great for cleaning grout, removing stains from upholstery, and even brightening up your outdoor furniture. So whether you're tackling a tough stain, disinfecting your home, or sprucing up your garden, bleach has got you covered. Remember, it's not about choosing the strongest bleach, but the right bleach for the job. Bleach, a versatile player in the cleaning game. Bleach is powerful, but it's vital to use it correctly. This potent liquid is a friend to many households, but it demands respect. So let's talk about how to use bleach safely and effectively. Firstly, always remember to wear protective gear. Gloves and eye protection are a must when handling bleach. It's also wise to ensure good ventilation. Bleach can produce harmful fumes, and you certainly don't want those trapped in your lungs. Now on to dilution. 
A common guideline is one cup of bleach to five gallons of water. That's enough for most cleaning tasks. But remember, more isn't always better. Next, the surfaces. Bleach is a no-go for porous materials like wood and fabric. It might discolor them or even damage the material. Metals too can react adversely with bleach causing corrosion. Lastly, never mix bleach with ammonia or other cleaners. The result could be toxic gases. With power comes responsibility, so handle bleach with care. We've taken quite a journey into the world of bleach. We've delved into its core ingredients, witnessed its transformation process, and celebrated its birth. We've explored the different types of bleach and their myriad uses, and importantly, we've learned how to use bleach properly, ensuring it remains a helpful ally rather than a harmful adversary. Next time you use bleach, remember the fascinating process behind its creation.